I'm so such a baby. You're sensitive. I have feelings. You're sensitive. Bridget called me sensitive Sally the other day. Was it Sally or Sophie sensitive? Sally, Sally. and I don't understand why you keep bringing it up. Are you I'm kind of proud of it now. I'm kind of proud. Are you sensitive about it? About I being sensitive? I asked if I needed to apologize. You don't have to apologize for anything. No, now I feel bad. Um, I apologize. You don't look if... like you feel bad. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if I like offended you when I said, called you sensitive Sally. It's just something that we need to discuss, you know? And you know there's only one way you could ever offend me. Yes, but we're not discussing that. I feel like this video has gone really off the tracks. Off, off the rails. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, everybody's been home a lot lately. And when you're at home, basically the only thing you do is what you were just doing is like staring at your phone. And either working on your phone, working on the computer. And when you work on the computer, your your eyebrows come together like that and you get this deep line here which uh you know what i have to say something mine just never goes away look at me you're well it That's does so annoying um when we inject a neurotoxin directly into the corrugator muscle it goes away yeah but I'm, it, mine drinks it yes it does it makes you an expensive employee so <laughs> Uh, one thing you may want to do now that we're all coming out of quarantine here is yes. to consider having a little Botox. The other thing the Botox will do is if you can't do this, you, it's hard to be as tense. And as you relax that muscle and you can't tense it up, you'll actually feel more relaxed. So I think we should give you Botox and why why don't you get it i have had both i'm times. sure but like why don't we do it like that is like Bridget, i honestly kind of can't even imagine you without some lines on your forehead yeah you know you know that um they they did a contest uh, looking for the world's worst patient and i we won. should do what if the botox goes you know into my diaphragm and i can't breathe you're gonna you be okay. Do CPR. Yes. Okay. Have you ever done this before? Yes. So today we have a patient. Dr. Ronowitz is going to get Botox. Now he tells me he's gotten it one time. How did it feel? Um. Did you like how it looked? I never look at myself. All right. Isn't that obvious? Go ahead. Start yeah. rolling. This is for cold. I'm gonna prep. Oh jeez. Oh. oh, I can't even get to it. All right. This thing is cold. <laughs> Dr. A, tell your fans what you're doing. I'm, like, I'm, I'm using a little chill roller here because if you chill the tissue, it anesthetizes. That means it makes it not hurt. You're going to be fine. I'm just going to give you a little bit. Um, how long does it take to work? It'll take about mm, five to seven days to really take full effect. Uh, are you doing this because you think I'm ugly? No, I'm doing this because I think it'll relieve some tension in like, life. All right. You just want your no. We gotta do a little bit here. Where? Like the whole front. You know, I you know I would not let anybody but you do this. I know. All right. Can you get your arm up again? I don't talk like this to normal patients. <laughs> and I'm definitely not a normal. Rest your head back, chin down. Oh, chin down. Yes, yeah, good. Okay, make an angry face. Hurra. Oh boy. All right, relax. It's hard to get angry. See, it didn't even hurt. I, I didn't feel a thing, actually. Really? I didn't. Up there, it's not as cold. You're gonna be, you're doing great. Have you infected yet? Yes, these are getting those pesky 11 lines. Oh. Yeah, please. Go ahead. I'm, I'm a baby. You know I'm, I'm a baby. I'm so excited about this. I won't do your whole forehead because you can't have no lines. Stop it. <laughs> You're fine. All right, 
one more. Where? Where? <laughs> one more where? <laughs> Let's do a little up here. Am I bleeding? No. You know what? I, you're so good, I don't feel a thing actually. Yeah, because I'm gentle. Do you know what it is? I think to not make it hurt, it's yeah. the it's the speed at which you go into the person's forehead. I'm delicate, dainty. You know? Just what I was thinking. Alright, one more. This you're so patient. Patience. Does it hurt? Did you have lunch? Yeah, did you? A Why? Bit. I just want to make sure you're not going to get like uh, hypoglycemic on Because in the Two afternoon more. you get hypoglycemic. What if my wife doesn't recognize me? Botox. Botox and there are other brands of botulism toxin. It's a drug that disconnects the nerve from the muscle. So it paralyzes muscle temporarily. After three or four months, the uh, receptors are replaced, so the effect of the drug wears off. And it comes as this little vial with just a minute amount of Botox. So it's not enough to really hurt somebody, like paralyze them. It's enough to only paralyze small areas. And it's really good for the nasal glabella, these frown lines, the forehead lines that are coming from the muscle elevating, contracting all the time, these little crow's feet lines that we get. Some PAs get a little line here on their nose, on the side of their nose when they crunch like that and smile. I'm not saying which PAs, but there are PAs that that happens to. And that little nasalis muscle can be paralyzed with Botox. So Botox is a wonderful drug when used properly very safe and it uh, really does something that almost no other treatment can do. So if you're thinking about trying it, it's a good way to get your, uh, put your toe in the water in terms of plastic surgery treatments. It's very safe and highly effective, not that expensive. And if you don't like it, it's fine because it wears off after just three or four months. So if you're thinking about trying it, I'd say, do like I did and give it a whirl. Come over here. <laughs> Monica, there are a lot of uses of Botox besides, like, a frigid just gave me a little bit here. Am I bleeding? No, you're not. Okay. Um, and there are a lot of uses of Botox besides just the lines on your forehead. There are lines here, there are lines on the nose, even the chin. There are the platysmal, do you have platysmal bands? Can you do this? I do. No. Yeah, Bridget has one of everything. There, there are other uses. For example, um, if somebody has a uh, perianal fissure, and it, which is a tear, and the muscle gets very, very tight, you can use Botox to loosen that muscle up so that that fissure can heal and that the patient can be comfortable going to the bathroom. You can use it for. Um, people that have an esophagus that's too tight. Sometimes a baby has an esophagus that's too tight. Sometimes people have a spasm of the muscle. There's a spasm called torticollis where the muscle here gets too tight and causes the neck to be pulled in one direction and you can use it to paralyze that muscle. Some women who have breast reconstruction, can they turn you around and show your back? So this, this muscle here, it's a big, uh, flat muscle like the pectoralis except it's on the it's on the back side not on the front side mm -hmm. when we bring that around the front it contracts when you're lifting your arm and stuff and that doesn't look right with the breast reconstruction you can use it to paralyze that muscle so there's a lot of places where it's useful to paralyze muscle do you know that now I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably knew because you know a lot. So thank you, Monica, yeah. for helping. So um, Botox and filler, two parts of the same sort of injectable pool of um, things that we can use for non-surgical improvements. 
Totally different though. Botox paralyzes muscle and causes the wrinkle to flatten out because we paralyzed the muscle. Fillers like Juvederm and Restylane, etc. Fillers fill in areas that are depressed, build up areas where we've lost fat through aging or injury. And that's a whole separate thing. So fillers on the one side and Botox on the other side. All good uh, ways to non-surgically improve the face. And the third one is all kinds of facial treatments on the surface like lasers and IPL, microneedling, dermabrasion, that sort of thing, and laser treatment on the face. So that's a whole other subject that we'll take up some other time. So I hope you learned a little something, enjoyed it, and we'll see you later directly from Ronowitz land.